table one, can you give me something you noticed about these hanger diagrams? Each side balances each other. So these are hanger diagrams. Pretend these are all a hanger. If one side of your hanger is too heavy, like it leans to that side, right? So every single one of these are balanced in this diagram. Table two, can you give me something else you notice? All shapes. Table three, something else we notice. And yeah, you're the only one off the team, so you'll have to do it. Okay, can you tell me what you think the pattern might be? Okay, so maybe like circles weigh a certain amount and so forth. All right, we don't know necessarily what each circle weighs, but we know like two of them has the same weight of square, right? So things like that. Um, table four, what's another notice? But John, you want to add to that? So are you guys seeing what he's talking about? I know you might not have heard from where you're at, but we have two circles here. On the third one, we have two circles. We also have a circle and a triangle first on the last one. And then the right side of it matches the right side of these, but combined. So this one, this last one, is when we basically add the first two. It's still balanced, isn't it? So that's what we were hoping that you would observe. So great. I'm sure there's lots of other things you could have noticed. Lots of things you could have thought of. But the key thing that we wanted you to see is that this last one is the sum of the first two, and it's still balanced. Um, any interesting wonders out there? So it is a notice of wonder. Okay, volunteers. Really? I wonder why it's shapes. So why did we use shapes? Um, Ryan? What is it measuring? What is it measuring? Harley, any other? Uh, how can we find what each shape represents? <laughs> All great wonders. All right, so this is like a visual example of what we've been doing with our system of equations. And this is like a visual example of what we'll be doing today, which is our last method of solving systems. So let me show you the goal for today. Hopefully you guys will do a little bit better than my first hour in explaining. Sorry. Anyway, question nothing. Pepper, capital P. All right, anyway, today's goal, lesson 14, is to investigate how adding or subtracting equations can help us solve systems of linear equations. So that's been our main focus lately, solving systems of linear equations. What are systems of linear equations? Don't actually tell me right now. Tell your group. Systems of linear equations are what? Fill in that blank, talk about it with your group for like one. What are systems of linear equations? Table four, can you tell me what a system of linear equations is? Um, say that y equals m. So that would be the linear part and the equations part. 
Because what makes something an equation class? Having an equal sign in it. So the linear part, it could be in this format or what other format could it be? A times B yeah. plus C Y plus uh, equal C. Okay, yeah. So if you see something in this format or it could be rearranged to that format, it's a linear equation. When you graph it, it'll be a straight line. Um, so then when we're talking about systems of linear equations, what does that mean? Table five, can you tell me? Systems means there are not necessarily. Anyone else in that group? That is a question. Systems of linear equations would be. Okay, John, you want to help him out? Two or more of these equations. So systems, and really we're only going to be looking at two equations at a time for our systems, there could be more. Um, but if you look on your paper at the examples, those are all examples of systems of linear equations. All right, the values for the variables should make both equations true. And we've been discussing different ways to solve them. What's one of the ways that we've solved them before? Table six, can you tell me? How we've solved systems so far? They're testing whatever. So today we're going to do elimination. In the past, what method have we used to solve systems to get those xy values? Okay, well, we helped you out. Substitution is the one we did Friday. Table six was the other one we did. All of that can be done. That is part of substitution. But the try. How else can we class? How else can we solve systems that we've already done? How can we find that x and y value that makes them both true? Okay, we can't spend all day on it. Substitution is one of the methods. Another method is, did we consider looking at the notes from previous day or no? So we're testing on this Wednesday next week. So we got to get it together. How else have we solved the system? Couple people getting out their notes. All right. So three methods, one of them, substitution. We did that Friday. We only spent one day on it because it is, it is kind of a pain in the butt. You still need to know how to solve equations and substitution has a lot of that. So where we still focus on that even though we spent just one day on it. Graphing is another way. Arguably the easiest way, if you have a graphing calculator, you just have to know how to use it, but you also have to know how to graph by hand. So that'll be on your constructed response. Graphing by hand, seeing where they intersect to um, have your answer. All right, that where they intersect, that coordinate would satisfy the X and the Y. So both is good. All right, now lastly, elimination is our last and final method. Why do we bother using three methods to solve for the same thing? Because in some situations, it's easier to do one versus the other. And that's like problem solving. 
help you way longer in your all your math classes, real world. Um, we're doing this one last method, which I think is the easiest method, um, and so forth. So keep in mind, even though graphing is also super easy, some of the questions are more like procedures for how to solve by substitution, how to solve by elimination. So you do need to know like the procedures. You can't just rely on graphing for everything. But that's what we're doing. We're gonna see if solving systems by adding or subtracting to eliminate a variable works, and that in doing that, we're creating a new equation that still has the same solution as the system. I'm recording right now. Also linked in the slides is the video that from last year or prior years that could help you. Oh, I'm on my math lab side, sorry. Okay, here we are. Also a video from prior years that can help you and it's taught a bit more directly. So like where I just tell everyone the steps and they just do it. So if you wanna see like other examples, maybe quicker, that's gonna be in there. But in the reason why we do this other curriculum where we do like activities is so that you remember the process more long term. All right, so I'm recording right now, it'll be linked in here. Puzzle piece is less than 14. And no more assessments this week, but definitely next week we have quite a few going into the grade book. We wanna be able to retake by Friday. So please try to be here. I know you don't usually have say in like your parents scheduling vacations and all that, but I truly think that you will do better on that retake Friday after we've spent like a whole week reviewing, a whole week correcting the test that you put, I truly think you'll do better on Friday than if you wait until after break, when I told you if you can take it. Okay, so don't plan to just fail on that Wednesday either, because technically after that retake, I don't have to give you another one. So questions on anything? All right, so that's all coming soon. We're now learning our final method and we're actually spending three days on this method. So elimination. So Diego is solving the system of equations. It's also on your paper if you wanna follow along. Here is his work. What did he do to solve the system? So what did he do here? Take a volunteer. What did he do? over here. Could you tell me? What did he do? So he actually added them together. Thank you. And you know that because he, he has the plus sign right here, maybe star, highlight, do whatever you need to do. Plus sign right here, he's adding the two equations together. What's 4x plus negative 4x? Zero. zero. And earlier someone said 0x, well, what's zero times x? No. Zero. Anything times Four. zero is zero. So yeah, it just becomes zero right there. What's 3y plus 5y? Mm -hmm. 10 plus 6. So that's what he did. He added the equations together. And in doing that, what happened to the x? Got rid of it. And now I just have one variable in my equation. I can easily solve for that variable. I get that y equals 2. Isn't that easier than like rearranging it to isolate one of the variables and then plugging in that expression and simplifying? Yeah. A lot easier in my opinion. Um, but so far, you can only do that if you have the coefficients similar. I don't want to say the same because four and negative four are different, but they're like the same number, different signs. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, so we get that y equals two. Then from here, he substituted that what y equals into one of the original equations. Which one did he plug it into? Top or bottom? 
the top equation. So everyone see how this over here is just the top equation, but instead of y, they put what y equals. Two, everyone see that? So then I would star highlight that so that you can make sense of it. So there is some substitution, but the first part is making it a lot easier to find one of the variables. Once I have one of the variables, I can plug it into either equation for elimination. It doesn't matter. Just pick the one that you think would be easier and then solve for that other variable. Because now that it's just X in this equation as a variable, I can now actually say that X is equal to one. Does that make sense? So that's what he did. If you want to rephrase it in whatever way you want to say, go for it. But I guess the key part here is he added the equations together. So he added, I put an I, but I didn't And I tried covering it, but it didn't. He added the equations together. And then you could keep talking more about that if you'd like. Now, the next question is, is the pair of X and Y values that Diego found actually a solution to the system? So a few ways, there's multiple answers for how you could check that something's a solution. Discuss that in your group. I'm going to call for some of those strategies. And there's multiple ways. How do you know that he actually found the solution to the system? This is what you're talking about in your groups. Seven, how can I tell that the X and Y values that Diego found is actually a solution to the system? What could I do? <laughs> Put it in Desmos, and then what do I do exactly after that? Put in Desmos and see where the lines intersect. So in other words, graph it, that would be the graphing method. Desmos is super easy to use, right? Um, see where it intersects. And if it intersects at one, two, then that's the solution. We confirmed that we did it right. What's another way, a different way? I'll take a volunteer. Jaffa? Put it into the variable like you can put it into the so plug in variables into original equation because the definition to a solution of a system is the value for the variables that make both true. Question when Michaela comes back. So with that being said, I should be able to take my original equation, both of them actually, because it can't just work for one of them. It has to work for both. What did we say X equals? One. Okay, so I'm plugging in a one for the X. And what did we say Y equals? Two. And I'm plugging it into my top equation. What's four times one? Four. What's three times two? Three. Does that equal 10? Yes. Okay, great. Then check the bottom one because it can't just work for one of them. Um, so I have a negative four times one plus five times two. We'll replace the X and the Y. What's negative four times one? Negative four. Plus five times two. Um, Does that equal six? Yes. So then, yeah, that is a solution. These are the two ways that I could think of. I don't know if there are other ways. If you want to share them, I can tell you if it's right or not. Um, you could also check by the substitution method, but that's even more work, right? We want to work smarter, not harder, but check with the other methods that we've already learned or just plug them back in and see if it makes it true. So next thing, does Diego's method work for solving these two systems? So his method was adding the equations together to eliminate a variable. Try doing that. Does it work for solving these systems? And if so, solve the system. 
So A and B on your paper right now. Does Diego's method work? Yes or no? And then explain why. John? Okay. For, well, we'll have to work it out together from the class then. Um, for system A, does Diego's method work? Now, let me remind you, Diego's method, what did he do? Diego's method? Yeah, say it. Oh, he added the, oh. Oh. He added the equations together. Okay, so then table eight, does adding the equations work for helping solve for one of the variables? Yes or no? Okay, so let's see. What's 2x plus x class? If I have two x's and then I add one more, how many do I have? <laughs> Three, x. Three x, right? So what's the coefficient if it's not written? One. So when I say combine or add, you're doing two plus one, that's three. And then the variable stays the same. So then it stays x. All right. Now what about y plus negative y? What does that equal? Class. Cancel out, you mean? Yeah. yeah, because what's one plus negative one? So yeah, I don't need to write the plus zero, but I'm just showing you that's what happens. Y plus negative Y is zero. What's four plus 11? 15. Now, again, I don't need to write plus zero. So really it's three X equals 15. So does that eliminate one of the variables? that I continue solving for my solution. Mm -hmm. So then you would say, yes, it works for this one. And let's keep solving. So opposite of multiplying three would be, whatever you do on one side of the equal sign, x equals five. Now, are we finished? No, because there's two variables. We have what x equals, usually once I have them, I'll put it in coordinate form. X is five. I still need to go back, take what X equals and plug it into one of the original equations. For elimination, it doesn't matter which one. I know for substitution it did, you had to plug it into the other equation that you had attached. In elimination, you can pick which one does it look easier to plug into, top or bottom. So I, I didn't really hear you. I heard a little bit of mumbling. Um, if it were me, I would choose the bottom one. But regardless, as long as you're doing the math the right way, it shouldn't matter. Okay, so we are saying that x equals 5. Anytime you plug stuff in, use parentheses. I know it doesn't really make a difference in this one, but it does in others. So then... I have five minus y equals 11. Get rid of what's farthest from the y. How would I cancel out that five? You would subtract it. Whatever you do on one side of the equal sign, I get negative y equal to what's 11 minus five? So, you sure? Six. And then, is the y fully alone? Yeah. Oh, there's a negative. There's a negative. Technically a negative what? A negative one. How would I cancel that out? Not add either. Divide. Because it's technically a negative one times the y, even though it's not written, right? The coefficients multiply by the variable. That's how you would cancel it. And whatever you do on one side. So what's my Y value going to equal? Negative six is correct. Questions on that? Okay, so that's the solution. 
And that's how to solve it by elimination, specifically by adding the equations together. So then table nine, does it work for system B, adding the equations together? All right, let's see. If I add these together, what's 8x plus 8x plus? What's 11y plus y? And what's 37 plus 7? 40, 44, yeah, you're right. Um, now, did that make it any easier to solve doing that? So in this situation, no. Diego's method was adding them together. In this situation, adding them would not work. Do you guys know what could work? John? Subtracting could eliminate one of the variables. Which variable could it eliminate? Ryan? We'll add you to the list. Guys? Let me remind you, appropriate times and not appropriate times. I'm asking a question. I want the hands that are up to be answers to my question. Yes? Yes. Okay, so let me ask the question again, because now all the interruptions people forgot the question. So the question was, what variable would subtracting eliminate? John? That's not the variable. Variable, your options are X or Y, which one would it eliminate? The X term, right? So if you want to show your work, because this is the answer to this question, no, adding doesn't work. You do have room on your paper underneath that where it says, what if we subtract? So let's look at that. So no, doesn't work if you add them together. Now, what if we subtract? So I'm gonna erase, I don't have it on my screen size, but it's on your paper size. And in the past, I would always put the symbol like over here, but this curriculum puts it on the right side, which I think is better. That way you're not impacting it for the first term. Because if I have to subtract to eliminate, I have to subtract for each term. Okay, so what's 8x minus 8x? Zero x, which then is really just zero, isn't it? If I have eight x's and I take eight x's away, how many x's do I have? Then what's 11y minus y? Ten, a whole number, is that it? Ten, ten y, and then thirty-seven minus seven. Now I don't need to write the zero plus. I'm just showing you that's what happens. Eight x minus eight x is zero. Now solve for y. That's opposite of multiplying ten. Whatever you do on one side, and y equals what? So we're finished. We're all done. What are we still need to find? Oh. The value of x. But I will start writing it as a coordinate. We found the y, so the y should be second in your x y coordinate. But we still need to find x. So how do I find x? Using the method. Mm -hmm. um. Okay, substitute the three for any of the y's. You can pick the top equation or you can pick the bottom. You guys do that on your paper. I'm going to freeze the screen. I'm going to plug it into the one that I think would be easiest. But as long as you're doing the math the right way, like you're not doing something that I haven't taught you, um, then you should still get the same answer for x. All right, so try that on your paper right now. And then freeze it and we'll compare.
So I thought the bottom equation would be easier to plug into, but even if you plugged into the top, like you should still get the same answer. So I plugged in three for the Y because that's what Y equals, not X. That's a common mistake. Don't plug it in the X when that's what Y equals. And then from there, you're isolating X. So start with what's farther. Farther would be the three. Do the opposite to cancel it out. Um, what property is this when I subtract on each side of the equal sign? of equality. perfect subtraction property of equality you're going to see that on your test what about if i do this on each side with the eight what property is that okay good but that's what i did next i get four over eight a lot of you like to flip it and make it a two like you love seeing the bigger number on top it's a one half or 0. 0.5 if you use a decimal so my coordinate is 0. 0.53 or one half three Make sense? Any questions? Okay. Um, there are, there's an activity on the back. I know some people are writing, so that's why I don't want to switch it yet. There's the same three systems that we already saw today on the back. What you're going to do is verify the solution graphically. So use Desmos. You don't have graph paper on you, I don't think. Um, Determine the solution with the graph. Put those solutions right here. And then find the sum or difference of the two original equations that would enable the system to be solved. So what you got when you added or subtracted them together. Then you're going to graph that too with your system. So really, you should be observing something each time you do it. So if you want to split it up in your group, have some do A, B, or C. You guys should all be seeing the same thing, no matter what system it is. So you know how to use your graphing technology. If you don't know how, make sure you ask. Write down the solution. Write down what the sum or difference would be to allow it to be solved. And make an observation about what you see after you graph all three things. Make sense? OK, I'm facing you. I'll flip it once I see people's coverage. Or really anyone. Uh, table one. Table one, you hear me? Pick one of the systems. I'll let you pick and then tell me what you got when you graphed it for the solution. So you have your choice of system A, B, or C. Which one are you choosing? Okay. Do we know how to use the graphing technology? No. So you just type it in. In one cell, we'll go to desmos.com, graphing calculator, type in the first equation, exactly how it looks. Click in another row, graph the second equation, exactly how it looks. And then your solution is where they intersect. So what's the solution for system B, table one, when you have it? Is that all? It only intersects at negative six?
Here, look at my screen. Where does it intersect that? Okay, and that should match what we got on the front side, does it? Because we've seen these before. We've seen them today, actually. System B, when we solved it by elimination, did we also get, or really not system, that system B on our back side, system A on our front side. Did we also get five negative six? Yeah. Okay, so it's verified graphically. The sum or difference, so the answers in number two for system B would be whether you had to add or subtract to enable it to be solved by elimination. So for system B, when we did it on the front side, did we have to add or subtract them to eliminate a variable? We added, because adding eliminated the y's, right? One plus negative one is zero. So when we did that, we got 3x equals 15. That's what we put for system B. That's the sum or difference of the two original equations. Are we following that? And then in number three, you had to graph that and see something. So here's my system. I'm now adding that third equation in. What are we noticing now with our graph? What happened? They still intersect at the point that we said the answer was. So that's your observation. And that should really be the observation for A and C too. So they all intersect at the same point. So all lines and there should be three of them, intersect at the solution. So even though we made a new equation, it still has the same solution as the original system. Does that make sense? Okay. So at this point, like we're doing the same thing tomorrow. Tomorrow's like a bit more practice. It's nothing really new tomorrow. Thursday, you'll learn how to when the coefficients are different, how you can still use elimination. Because right now, we need the coefficients to, they can be opposite signs, but they need to be like the same base number. All right. So if they're opposite signs, you add them. If they're the same sign, like in system C, the common coefficient was the eight in front of the X. If you have the same sign, then you need to subtract. So here's an easy way to remember that. Maybe write it down. Same sign, subtract, SSS. If the common coefficients have the same sign, you subtract to eliminate the variable. 8x minus 8x is 0. So say that they were both already negative. So what's a negative eight minus a negative eight? It is zero, not negative 16. Feel free to check it in your calculator if you want. But that's why I'm saying like, if it was the same sign, maybe if I write them on top of each other. But say the system was negative eight X and negative eight X. Subtracting them also gives me zero. So if the common coefficients have the same sign, subtract. If they have opposite signs, you add to eliminate. Question? Okay, I would, don't pack up. Or else I'm not going to let you leave until you get some practice done. Okay.